A Prayer to be Filled with the Holy Spirit Written and read by Kyle Norman You will be filled with power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 During my first year of ordained ministry, I met a man named Curly. Every week I traveled to his house to lead a service for the small group of men who met for prayer and Bible study in his home. At that time of meeting Curly, he could no longer walk, and he was on 24-hour oxygen. The hose that supplied his oxygen ran through his entire house. During one visit, I arrived at the house to see all the gentlemen seated around Curly. I took a chair and moved it beside him, and began to lead the service. At some point during our prayers, it was clear that Curly's disposition had changed. He seemed to labor for breath, and his complexion seemed to grow increasingly pale. The gentleman and I exchanged glances of concern. Deciding that an ambulance needed to be called, I stood up from my chair, and when I did so, Curly took a huge breath inward, and the color quickly returned to his face. See, apparently, when I arrived and moved my chair beside Curly, I had accidentally placed my chair on his oxygen hose. It was not my finest hour of ministry. Jesus promises to breathe the Holy Spirit inside of us. But what is it that cuts us off from the Holy Spirit? Is there something in your life that dampens your experience of the Spirit's power? Jesus desires to breathe the Spirit into our lives and into the lives of all his followers. But we do need to be open to the Spirit's presence. Internally, we need to have an inner receptiveness to the Spirit and openness to the Spirit's work. This is what we see on the day of Pentecost. The disciples, they're all together in one place. They'd witnessed Christ's resurrection and ascension, but they still had many questions, and they didn't know how everything was going to fit together. They had yet to step forward into ministry, but suddenly, without warning, they hear a sound like a mighty wind. Tongues of flame appear to fall from the rooftop and rests on each and every one of them. And the Holy Spirit, who had always been present but not always recognized, now descends upon each of them in powerful ways. Such is the exterior frenzy of the day of Pentecost, but the true power of that day actually happens internally. Internally, the disciples feel the inner vibrancy of faith pulsating within them. With the Spirit comes this clarity about Jesus. Now they are certain to have power and force in their prayers as the Spirit moves through their words to affect people around them. And if that were not enough, the disciples seem to have this inward strength and boldness to step outside of their zones of comfort and let other people know the good news of the gospel. The disciples, they didn't quench the Spirit's work. They didn't resist it. They began to witness others not because they had a plan or a strategy, but because they were following where the Spirit was leading. And the prayers they prayed, they were fueled with the Spirit's power and effectiveness, not because they uncovered secret phrases and systems, but because they allowed the Spirit to move through them. This was a Christian life that the disciples lived, and it drastically changed the world around them. It's sad that many people think that this can't be the same today. Some people mistakenly think that Pentecost is just an event of the past, and the Spirit's descent upon believers will is not as present as it once was. Or maybe it's only present for the seasoned people of faith. But the pulse of the Holy Spirit is a reality for every person of faith. We can no more deny the resurrection of Christ than we can deny the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The bestowal of the Holy Spirit, it's not dependent upon us. It's not based on our skills or our aptitudes, our holiness or our religious efforts. No, the sealing of the Holy Spirit is promised by Christ himself and is given as a testimony to his Lordship and his love. So the same reality 
that was present for the disciples in that room is present in our lives. And it means that the fire of the Spirit and what the Spirit does dramatically for the early disciples is available to us. The Spirit is always here. But if we feel that we need a fresh bestowal of the Spirit in our life, all that we need to do is reach out and ask. And if that is you, then let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life. I know that the Spirit is always present and that the Spirit is always working. But the stresses and struggles of my life can mean that I don't recognize the Spirit at all times. And I may even close myself off from your Spirit's work. But in your grace and in your love, you promise that your Spirit is given to me. And it is a testimony to the covenant that you made with me in my baptism. And so I pray that you renew me and my faith with the power of your Holy Spirit. Send the fire of the Spirit over me as on the day of Pentecost. In faith, O God, I open myself to the Spirit's work in my life. O Holy Spirit, work through me. Guide me into all truth. Lead me deeper into my faith. Inspire my prayers and work forcefully through those prayers. And, O Holy Spirit, may you stretch me beyond my comforts to the places where you call me in ministry and witness. I humbly ask, come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill me anew. Set me afire. Breathe in me and work through me. Amen. Your Daily Prayer is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Come